So you have a television that the screen is black, completely dark. Maybe you still have an LED on. Maybe you still hear some audio. It's a pretty common issue, especially with LGs and Insignia televisions. Hopefully with this video, you'll get the info you need to maybe save some money and fix one of these common issues yourself. Obviously, if you've got no uh, video, first thing you do, make sure your cable box or your receiver is working. Make sure you have no problems with your cabling. Uh, I'm going to assume that that's squared away and we're just going to move on. The first thing you want to do when checking for uh, when you have that black screen is uh, have the TV powered on and you're going to use a flashlight and you, and you hold the flashlight at a certain angle and you if you see like you see right here right it's asking for an input if you see a video signal there whether it's the television channel you were watching right here it's just plugged in then you know that you has at least you have a pretty good idea that your main board your video is being processed the issue with that this black screen is going to be either bad LEDs, a bad LED driver, or maybe a power board. So the first thing we're going to do to take the television apart is obviously you're going to power it down. You'll lay it down on a better surface than I have here. And look for the screws that take off the this back of the case. They're all going to have little um, arrows on them like I just pointed out. Uh, make sure you hit them all the way around. There might be some that are hidden. And then you should be able to uh, pull this panel right off. This particular one here, if you look at the uh, coax uh, connector there, it protrudes. So you don't want to just lift straight up. You kind of want to pick it up and go to the side a tiny bit just to make sure the case doesn't get hung up on um, either that coax connector or those RCA connectors that are on the back of that uh, main board. I just want to take a sec to go over the inside of this television. Pretty much every TV you open up nowadays is going to look something similar to this. It's really simple. If you ever remember working on the old school TVs, you this is like nothing right here. Okay, and so um, most of the time you'll have a setup like this. You'll have uh, what's called the power board. Um, obviously, that's going to be where your AC power comes into and where the power gets either stepped up or stepped down to go to different parts of the television. In this particular uh, model, the LED driver is part of the power board. Um, some televisions, you might have another uh, component somewhere else, usually up top like this, and uh, you'll have power going to that, and then you'll have that driving the LEDs. This particular one, the power board also drives the LEDs. On the right side here, you see where all your inputs come in. That's your main board. Your video gets uh, pretty much processed there, your audio. Um, from there you come out to your speakers and then behind this metal plate this is just a metal plate to give the television some um, uh, to make it stable when you put it on a stand but behind this metal plate is what's called a T-Con board that's the scariest part of this whole of the whole television well that and the screen uh, so that T-Con board is what's going to send your signal to the uh, crystal display um, if you ever see a television with weird stripes on it, weird colors on it, as long as the screen's not broken, it's usually indicative of a bad T-Con board. So let's get back to the problem with this television. We already know that we've got some video signal getting to the screen. We just don't have backlighting. Uh, and so the first thing we always usually we're going to check first is this power board. Sometimes you'll find a fuse on here. Um, Usually uh, you'll smell something. I always just kind of quickly smell any of these components. You can pick up the odor of something that's been burned out. Uh, on uh, Usually you'll find, if there's a problem with the board, you'll find a capacitor uh, that's either bulged or maybe even leaking. And you can replace those one off if you want to tackle soldering. That's not that difficult. It is really simple though to just pick up one of these boards for 50, 60 bucks and swap the entire thing out if that's the case. This particular board looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is start testing for the LED issues. This part here, see the Molex, it's just, this one's pretty simple. Just two wires going out to drive those LEDs. And that tells me that all of the LEDs for this television are on one circuit. If you've got two plugs going out, then that means they're, maybe they're split up into two different uh, banks of LED strips. And the testing is the same, just got to do it twice. So before we move on to this next part, I just want to say that we've got to have power going to the television. So obviously safety first. If you don't, you probably should have a little working understanding of how electricity works. You don't want to make your hand or any other part of your body uh, complete a circuit. 
if you're not comfortable with that, then you probably just not want to go through with it. Um, but the television's got to get power to that main board, and that's how we're going to test the output here. Um, you're going to use a meter. Again, if you don't have simple stuff, if you don't have a meter uh, to check voltage, check continuity, um, then maybe not the right thing to do here. Uh, here I'm going to take the meter. I'm going to just uh, hit chassis, ground, uh, and I'm going to test here the output um, of this board. And you'll see it's going to hit about 240 volts. And that is right about where we want to be. We are still plugged in and it's trying to drive those LEDs. What I'll do after this is unplug that Molex and test it again. And I should get about 270, maybe 280 volts. And that's going to let me know that the board's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Um, after that, then it's time to check the LEDs. So with the cable unplugged, I'm going to probe uh, the wires and see if I have continuity. What does that mean? That means that uh, if you have no continuity, that means your circuit is open. If your circuit's open, whatever it's supposed to happen is not going to happen. Uh, and so I'll just quickly change my meter here to, to continuity. I like to just double check. I always like triple check, make sure that my probes are working good. And here I'll tap the chassis. I've got that good just for the heck of it. I want to see uh, how many, what the impedance of my screwdriver is. And then I'm going to check this um, Molex here. And plugging it in, if I've got nothing showing up there, if I've got some crazy high numbers showing up there, um, it'll just it'll just be indicative of an LED issue, and we'll move on to working on that. All right, so I'm moving on with this uh, LED repair. Before we flip the television over, we're going to take off this uh, metal plate. Like I said, behind here is that T-Con board, okay? And there are two ribbon cables that uh, drive the crystal display. Um, this is where the television starts to get pretty delicate. Um, you don't want to just, very important here, you don't want to just try to pull these things out. These, the plugs that they go into have kind of like a little door that you want to snap up and then that ribbon comes out quite easily. Uh, and so here you see the little black piece, that's going to pivot. Uh, and when the pivots, that blue strip is where the end of the cable is and that's where it sits into that socket. So you want to take a little screwdriver uh, you can do it with a fingernail if you have good fingernails, but you can, I use a screwdriver and I just pop this thing down. You'll see it uh, release there. And then that ribbon cable will come out nice and easy. And I just want to, you want to do that here before we flip the television over. All right, with the television flipped over, we're going to take this outer bezel off. And there's going to be little screws going around the entire exterior of it. So take your time, make sure you, you look carefully and hit every single screw that's there. What you don't want is to miss a screw and then find yourself trying to pry some pry it up when it's not going to want to go anywhere. And that, that happened almost with this television right here. Behind the IR uh, receiver was one little screw and I didn't see it at first. And so I started picking up the bezel and that corner didn't lift up and then I, I knew something was up. But... Once the bezel is off, we'll have access to two little boards that the T-Con um, connection was made to. And that's what's going to drive the crystal display. And we'll have to kind of unseat them from, and this particular television, they're held on by little plastic uh, tabs. We have to unseat them, flip it up, careful not to mess up that ribbon cable, um, flip it up and we'll just tape it onto the television, uh, the screen I should say itself. This, by the way, is, is magic tape. If you, if you take a notice of how it goes on, um, it's just kind of like, look at that, it's magic. So I'm just going to go ahead and admit right now that this next part, I'm not doing it the right way. Um, there are tools to properly take off a crystal display. I'm not doing that. I'm just going to kind of shape my arms into like a little forklift position and as carefully as I can lift this display up and go bring it somewhere where I put it down on a really soft surface that was completely flat and obviously making sure no one is going to go over there. Um, but that's the one part that's the hardest for this entire fix really is getting that display on and off without damaging it. Moving on, 
Uh, next is we're going to take off. There's four these little four black strips here that go around and hold on what's called the diffuser. Uh, kind of sandwiches it into or against the chassis. Um, now this is an Insignia brand television again. So uh, check, you know, take some time to look at your model to see how these things come off. You definitely don't want to be pulling on something you shouldn't be. But for this particular television, these strips, there's a little tab that kind of slides straight down into a slot in the chassis, right? That's that one right there. And then there's a larger tab that kind of goes around and snaps into a piece on the bottom of the chassis. And that's it. You're going to have to kind of pull one out and wiggle it straight up, and then they'll all come off. Once you've got all those strips off, you're going to want to pull off this um, diffuser. And there's two layers on this one, so there might be three layers on your television. So I think it's a good idea to put a little piece of tape here just to kind of keep them oriented together because they do have little slots and tabs so that they fit onto the chassis the right way. Uh, so you want to just pull that up. That's going to come off quick, uh, pretty easily. Next, you'll see the LEDs behind this white sheet that's a reflector. And uh, before you can pull that reflector off, you'll have to take off these little clips. Um, these clips, they, they hold that reflector in place, and they also keep that diffuser um, nice and steady to hold them both in place. Uh, there's little tabs on uh, the tops and bottoms of these things. And it makes it kind of difficult because it's kind of like this little nub in the middle. And so I found the easiest thing to do is to kind of flex the um, clip itself and it'll help you pop it out. Before you pull this reflector sheet off, just check to make sure there's nothing else like tape. Mine had some tape holding it off and you don't want to rip it. So make sure nothing's really holding it down and you can peel it off to expose the strips of LEDs. And the way these LEDs are wired, it's what's called series. Um, and that's why when you have a break and you have no continuity, uh, they all, nothing's going to work. So you see on the bottom end there how the cabling goes through. It comes in, uh, hits the bottom of every board, and the power just basically goes in one side, comes back out the other, and continues on completing the circuit to go back to that, to that uh, power board. I've got one strip out just so that I could uh, test it on its own and show what it looks like. Uh, you'll usually will find some test points like this. Sometimes they're taped over, so your probes, you always want to have something sharp. Um, either you scrape it or just sharp enough to, to poke through the tape that's there to hit those contacts. Um, there's a bunch of YouTube videos on how to make your own LED tester, putting batteries together, things like that. I have a tester. I suggest if you have a chance to come across televisions now and then um, to get one. They're not that expensive, but it's going to do a couple things. It will provide enough voltage to fire them all up. It will protect them. So uh, if I'm testing two uh, LEDs, if I'm testing a bank of six, if I'm testing all of them, it will fire them all up. It will self-regulate. It won't blow anything out. So here you see my first test right off the bat, this first strip. Only two of those LEDs are working. That third one barely lit up. So now I'm just going to quickly go through and test each of these strips individually and see which ones light up. And it's a shame when almost all of them work and just a few of them are what causing what's causing a problem. But look what happens here. I just came across one strip that didn't light up at all. all right? I'm going to move move along and they all light up. So. That's, that's the main problem right there. That one strip that's no good, that's killing the continuity. That's not letting any of the other lights turn on. It's like a Christmas tree when you lose a bank of lights uh, because of one bulb that's out. So here I'm going to test across uh, the boards. And see we have the two strips lighting up, the third strip lighting up. When we get over to the bad one, it's no good, dead. So from anything from there on, it's not going to work through the test points plugged into the main board, nothing's going to work at all. All right, so these come in just a few days. I like using Shop Jimmy. I will uh, link it down below. Um, but yeah, a couple days these come in, and uh, they're well, they're, they are well packaged. You still want to be careful with them. And basically, we'll just take those two little green strips of tape off, pop all of these um, strips out, 
being careful not to damage the little plastic little plugs that hold the cables in and replace them. Now as you put these back in use caution you don't want to flex them too much because you can damage them. Um, I did skip one here I did that on purpose just to trigger my wife's OCD. Um, I'm already using the dining room table so that's just gonna set her off. Um, these little tabs right here they will fit into like a little uh, nub and that just guides them in place you really can't screw that up. There, there's no other way for them to go. I'm um, so going to wire them all back up here and I should be able to test across uh, the test points from one end to the other and get them to all light up. And now we just start the process of putting this thing back together in the reverse order. Just take care when you're putting these pieces in. Here's that the clip again. Make sure you, I like to flex it really get them in there. Um, one thing that's really important, don't put, if something's not fitting, if it, if it, if you think you can just kind of snap something into place, don't. You'll break something, especially when it comes to that screen. Now these sides will go on a lot easier than they came off because they kind of just slide straight downward and then that bottom clip goes around and, and locks into place. Um, here, very important when the screen goes back on, like I said, if it, there's any flex, if there's any piece that's protruding, don't think you're going to snap it into place. Make sure it sits perfectly nice and even uh, without uh, a, lot of, a lot of work. Now we're just going to slide these little drivers, these boards back into place. You'll see the tab here that holds it in. And I just want to kind of show how that ribbon cable uh, snaps in to that connector. Like I said before, there's a little black uh, piece. It's kind of like a door, right? And it's going to pivot up and down. And when it goes down, it, it holds the cable into place. So you see the end of the cable, that blue strip there. As long as that is seated nicely into the tray, into that connector there, when you flap that, when you spin that little door down, it's going to lock it into place, and then you'll be good to go. Now it's time to get the bezel back on. Um, again, if it doesn't seat easily, look for a reason why it's not fitting. Do not push it um, harder than you think you should because you might break that that screen. The screws that go all the way around, just like we took off in the beginning, put those back on. Now, I already have this thing plugged in because I was kind of rolling one long video, trying to do it in real time and just kind of see. At this point, didn't even know if it was going to work or not. But uh, got that IR uh, receiver back on. going to hit the power button and see what I get. And we're done. The unit's going to go back together the way we took it apart. We just have that rear case to put back on, really, and we're, and we're done. But this was about $50 for those LED strips. Um, and it was either it's throwing a television away or $50. Bucks. Um, good results here. Put a link down below for where you can find parts or tools. And don't be afraid to try to tackle some of these things. If the television's already broken, you got nothing to lose unless you get electrocuted. But we'll try not to do that. Uh, subscribe. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, hit me up. Any ideas for other videos, I'll be happy to hear it.